Howdy. So here, here we are, girls and boys. So uh, coming back at you uh, once again in this new episode of the Sound Alchemy Podcast. In here, I got my good friend, uh, uh, Alder Brains, uh, from the band. Uh, well, I don't even know if if calling it a band is properly correct. You will be the one who should be telling the story, man. So go ahead, introduce yourself. Yeah, so the so band band works. We're, we're a virtual band. It's me and the voices in my head. Um, <laughs> How many voices? Play, yeah, all the voices. Yeah, I'm just you know, I, I play the play the instruments in my head, right? You know, like I I, I like to think of it as uh, uh, I hear the music in my head, and then I just stick a a, a cable into my ear and then record <laughs> that. That's that's how it works, right? Obviously, not really, but you know, uh, kind of like you know, you think about the gorillas, and they've got you know, it's really just Damon Albarn, but they've got you know, two keys. And Murdoch and all that stuff. Nice, nice, nice. Same, same kind of, same kind of idea, but not not just a band. We're also a satirical cult. Mm. Um, the Church of the Golden Plates is the, the long name of it, right? Yeah. Uh, it comes from when I was living in Utah. Uh, it's a it's a very religious, uh, religiously oppressive town. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of laws about you know what, when you can drink and where you can drink and how much. Beer can only have three percent alcohol in it, or else really? you can't buy it. Yeah, it's, it's, wow. it's there's <laughs> a little bit, a little bit too, ast- too extreme. extreme. I wasn't expecting yeah. that from 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 Utah, to be honest. I'd never been there, but but uh, well, I am shocked. I I, yeah. I I had a fairly knowledge about it about Utah being a little bit more conservative in a way, but this is a little bit too much uh, conservatism in in my book. So yeah, exactly. So somebody uh, saying hi to you. Uh, it's Panky. Uh, Panky Valdez is one of our one of one of our good uh, uh, friends and a, and, a, and a fan of the band. So he's giving a shout out to you, man. So Panky, they are, you should be happy. Somebody's recognizing your existence in the world. So that's good. <laughs> right. Exactly. I I, I matter. Thank you. <laughs> happy birthday, buddy. Yeah. Um. yeah. Oh oh good, good, good. oh yeah. We got we got more more messages coming. We got another friend of ours and and a good fan of the band as well. His his name is Enray and he's coming from uh, from Mexico. So. So once again, another 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 fellow uh, Mexican is, is saying hello to you, my friend. So here we are. Oh, happy, happy birthday! <laughs> Can you elaborate a little bit more that's, about that's, your? That's... Absolutely. So in the Church of the Golden Plates, uh, every day is your birthday, right? Because <laughs> why not? Fuck yeah. it. Yeah, that's Live like every day is your birthday. What could possibly go wrong? It's a great philosophy. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. So yeah, that's so, that's, that's we we have five commandments. Um, not ten. Five, that's ten's way too much. Uh, the first one, yeah, it's pretty standard. Don't be a dick, right? I mean, I think we can all agree, agree. That that's a pretty yeah. good rule to live by. Um, the second one is nevertheless, less the sun persists. Uh, it's it's the understanding that when you wake up uh, tomorrow and you're hungover, uh, the sun's gonna be there, no matter what you do. So don't fight it. Just just write it out. Uh, the third one, I like your style. Just think about it. Someone comes up to you and says, "Hey, man, I like your style." Good job. Yeah. How good you feel right now? Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Thank you, by the way. I know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Uh, the fourth commandment is because Stone Cold said so. Don't, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's yeah. uh. He's a hero of mine as a child. Yeah. As most of us were growing up here in the States. Right? I haven't watched wrestling in probably 20 years, but it's, it's still fun to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, crack open a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the fifth commandment is the most important one. And that's don't beat up your mom. Don't be, don't be, no what? You know, that's. Don't beat up your mom. Oh yeah, totally, totally, totally. <laughs> I, I I can see why somebody would do it, but it's it's a possibility. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, no, I, I, I can't see anyone beating up my mom. My stepmom, I can probably see that. <laughs> so now, now, you still don't do it. Yeah, yeah, you totally. still don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not one of your, your <laughs> it's not a possibility. So, right, exactly. so now, uh, now that we are starting to understand everything that is going on, or at least we have an idea of what's happening inside your head, how, how can you explain the relationship between? That beha- that that uh, all of the voices uh, going on in your head, and how you translate them and you materialize them into music. 
how are how are you using music as a way as as a as a, how can I put it like a, as a, as a conduit for all of those voices that are coming in? So all, all these voices have different different tastes in music. They like they have different influences, different styles, right? So you know, the, there's the bass player in my head. Uh, call him the apostate. Uh, I did a little video um, that, that's on my YouTube channel. It's a little mockumentary, right, where yeah. I play all the characters. It's, it's fun. It's kind of a uh, Christopher Gessy. If you've ever seen a, a Mighty Wind or Waiting for Guffman. Oh yeah. Final Tap. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's, it's kind of it's kind of reminiscent of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like that. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a fun time. There's there's laughs to be had, but uh, yeah. So in my music, you know, I, I take all those different influences. I wear out, wear them on my sleeve. You know, you can, you can tell that the bass players, you know, like got some real Peter Hook influence, right? Uh, on the keyboards, there's there's a lot of classic rock and uh, and uh, female powerhouse influences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gu guitar gets uh, anywhere from uh, really metal to really emo. Yeah. Um, and the, and then vocally, it's all about the, the post punk kind of David Bowie, Robert Smith kind of. So like I have all those different influences in my head that kind of melt together. But you don't, all, all in a way, in a way, it makes sense. Because your your all of those those styles are following some sort of well, they're following kind of the same uh, uh, um, aesthetic in a way. They are not that far from each other. Of course, they are completely different, but they have certain stages on which they overlap on each other, and that's where nice. the connection happens. And that's the beauty of, of, of music, and, and that's the beauty of what you're doing because it makes sense. For those of you who have never heard his music, you should go check it out. He's uh, he's available on YouTube and he has some tracks as well on Spotify. So most of his stuff. Uh, well, where, where where can we find you uh, outside of, of Golden Plates? Because everybody uh, and their mores have access right now to your to your tagline on on, on, on the live broadcast. But oh yeah, I mean uh, Spotify and, and YouTube are probably the best the best spots. I, I do a lot of, a weekly cover on YouTube. Good. Um, so every Tuesday it's called Cover Song Tuesday. Uh, I'm taking a break this weekend because uh, I'm on vacation. It's a that's good, holiday, but... and that's that's right as well deserved. <laughs> everybody, everybody. Oh, somebody is asking where on YouTube, Panky. Uh, what's what's the tagline for your YouTube channel? Golden plates golden as well. Plates. Golden plates. I'm gonna I'm gonna type it down uh, with the with the golden plates like this. Here, done. Sweet. So you got it, Panky. So go and check it out once we're finished with this amazing podcast. Yeah, now. Uh, how did you did you end up um, playing this kind of music? Because now we understand that this that the sound that you got going on, and now we understand some of the philosophy uh, behind it. That now, how can you? Well, well, how did you end up becoming a musician, and why did you decide to keep going as a musician? Oh man! Um, so I got my first bass guitar, you know, when I was 16 years old. I, I'm an old dude, so I'm not gonna t tell you how long ago that was. But <laughs> a long time ago, in a, in a least in, in a far, far away place. <laughs> yeah, in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. And uh, you know, just because I wanted to start a shitty punk band with my friends, right? Yeah. You know, we were terrible. We were called, I think, Top Green Handed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was not good. Uh, we we you know sang songs like Scooby Dooby Doo, Scooby Dooby Da. Nice. Right? Just sounds catchy. Up, right. Yeah, you know, Ramon's style, made yeah. three notes on the bass. I didn't know what I was doing. Right? <laughs> like um, most of us, man, I, I started exactly the same way. Not only the Ramones, yeah. but I sucked as well. So that's part of the that's part of life, I guess. Exactly. I I, I remember when I finally learned how to play uh, Ransom bass lines on the bass. I was so excited, nice. you know, that I finally could play more than you know uh, eighth notes on yeah. the same note. <laughs> <laughs> over and over again, uh, over, over, over the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm finally figuring out. Oh, I can move my fingers. Yeah. Right. There are more. There is more. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's more to life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, then I picked up guitar and piano. Um, I, I went. I studied music in college. Uh, you know, it, but the, all the technology was 20 years behind. So I didn't go to the best colleges because mm. you know, poor. <laughs> well, at least so, you, you, know, you you try to get some right. uh, some form of education. That at least you you, you try it, man. That's that's an important thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, I took I took a great songwriting course. Um, that that was great. But like, I took this electronic music course. Yeah. And you know, we were using you know twenty year old workstations yeah. to 
you know, our final was just recorded four bar phrase in a chord workstation. Oh, wow. From the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, you know, it was, I, I've learned more from YouTube, you know, in the last five months than I did in four years of <laughs> yeah, college and, education on mixing and things like that. And I'm still, I'm still on, you know, there's, you never stop learning. That's, that's, there's that's the spirit. Tech. Yeah. That's something that I always say. There, the, uh, everything in life is always an opportunity to learn more and to become. Uh, it's impossible for you to become a master in, in, in a matter of years. It's 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 yeah. almost like uh, you have to devote your entire life in in in, perf in getting something perfectly done, and it's only going to happen after you spend years and years and years of experience on it. That's where the the whole philosophy of uh, I don't know if, if I remember correctly, but somebody uh, there there is the common sense of not the common sense that the common saying that. In order to really become a master on, on a certain area, you have to spend at least 10,000 hours Five practicing. Years full time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, you won't you won't be able to call yourself a master on, on it, and it makes sense exactly. because one thing uh, coming from my experience as uh, as uh, as both as a musician, as a music producer, and as and, and as a mixing engineer. Uh, when I started, the first thing that I that I that I that I think that made a huge difference in my life was the day that I that I stopped, looked at myself in the mirror, mirror, and I said to me, "You suck. You are a really, you are a horrible, a genius guitar player. You are a really bad singer, and you don't know how to write music. And you will you you will see why. Because in that very moment, I said, why." When you understand, when you recognize that you are not good at something, that opens up your head and your mind and your soul to the idea that there are ways to improve. If you always call, if you if you don't recognize that you suck at something, you won't be able to improve. So the only way to improve is by understanding and realizing that you are not the best at that stage of your life or your career. And afterwards, it's an always a constant uh, day in, day out, uh, endeavor of learning, improving, practicing, and becoming a better person. The, always try to achieve, but that's that's part of my mantra. Your only duty in life is to always try to achieve, to become the best version of yourself, no matter what. Absolutely. And 100%. yeah, and, um, <laughs> and well, you, you know, because you, you do it too. When, when you're the producer and the engineer, and you're playing all of the instruments, yeah, that's a lot to master doing ten thousand yeah. hours. Of you know, yeah. seventeen different tasks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that that add up. Uh, that you end up in with what, like seventeen thousand hours uh, required. Hours. That's a lot. Know, here, I, here I am. You know, all these years later, and still, still learning new new techniques and Tricks new ways and of stuff. playing each different instrument. And get better at each one, and you know. And, yeah, you know, songwriting is a whole different issue too. <laughs> totally, and, and you know, and you know, uh, last week when I was uh, when I was talking with somebody else on the podcast, which you should check out once we're finished with this one, um, we were discussing how the music industry has changed, and one of the many things that uh, that we were discussing was the fact that now everything, and this is fairly a new development, now everything has to be done by the artist itself, because you no longer oh, yeah. you no longer need a marketing team to promote your stuff. You no longer need a, 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 a proper producer or a proper mixing engineer to record your demos. Even if even if you go as far as to properly understand how to make your own music, you can be the, the mixing engineer as well and the producer. Of course, that requires much more hours of effort and, and knowledge oh, yeah. and stuff. But it's, it's still in, 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 within, in, in within the reach of your possibilities. And the same applies to your own self promotion, not only on the on the on the marketing uh, aspect, but also on the on the streets. You know, you no longer need uh, to have to hire a, a booking agency as long as you are promoting yourself properly on online. So we are we as an artist, uh, as musicians, have to evolve and have to become something more than we used to be. And one of the points of that discussion was that, at least. From my uh, own experience, and I think you will you will agree with this one. Uh, I started my career in one stage of the music industry. Then that stage died when the when Napster and all of that stuff happened, right? The the electron yeah. the, the digital revolution happened. Then the industry morphed into the streaming business. We got the Spotify, and it became the norm. And everything everything that we did was forced to move into that uh, environment. But now. With this uh, whole situation, the global situation that we're going through, it's changing once again. 
now we're moving into the into this uh, in, into a world where probably nobody's going to be able to perform live on the streets for the next 16, 6 to 12 to even there are people even saying that we might have to wait until uh, 18 months in order for somebody to have access to a proper uh, uh, concert venue because of all yeah. of the contingency measures that are been taking place everywhere in the world so the industry is changing and we're facing a new a new development in the, in the industry as a whole oh absolutely um, but so the other night I saw this really cool live stream. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Reggie Watts. Oh yeah. Um, but he put together this amazing audio visual experience with this band Sextile. Yeah. Um, they, they play kind of like, uh, they kind of like remind me of the chemical brothers, but mm. with a little bit more of a rock and roll feel. Yep. Um, and they, they had this, uh, they created this almost digital venue. And they transported like almost holographic images of the band, and they performed live in this digital venue. Nice. And it was really cool to watch. The lighting and uh, the way they did everything was absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, there there might have been some mushroom involved when I was watching it. That might have helped a little bit. <laughs> that might help, but <laughs> that might help. but uh, yeah, that was a that was an absolutely great uh, great experience. And uh, you know, I was together with some friends from out of town and, yeah. you know I know we're social distancing but you know we it's just been three months you know it's a, it's, it's a holiday weekend here in the states so yeah. you know it's like we've all been socially distancing none of us have seen other humans in three months so what who are we gonna hurt right? yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah what would ha what, what could go wrong <laughs> what could go wrong yeah everything Ever. but, you know, <laughs> no but what could go right yeah exactly yeah exactly and there is only one way to know there is only one way to know can't live your life in fear. I mean, you got to be responsible and totally. you got to care about other people. And exactly. Their safety. At exactly. the same time, you can't, if, if you're living your life in fear, you're not going to live your life. Exactly. And you only get one. Yeah, you're <laughs> totally right. You're totally right. And, and it's it's a funny, it's a funny, uh, that, well, it's a, it's a funny way that we're living right now because before we go in, we, we went live, girls and boys. Uh, we were, we we're actually, we've been talking for, for this uh, for how many minutes? For almost like 15 minutes. We were discussing how. Minutes, yeah. Easily, easily. We were discussing how different the, the whole uh, the whole uh, uh, lockdown has been going on in different parts of the world. Because, uh, well, myself, I am in Ireland. Uh, Golden Plates, Golden Plates, it's in it's in San Diego, in California. So we are in completely opposite sides of the world. Uh, but even even though we are living in such a completely different area, we are experiencing kind of the same thing regarding human being human interaction. Because uh, people are, are uh, at least from my from my uh, perspective, uh, and I'm not going to say that they're overreacting. It's more like people are still unsure on what to do, and I can't blame them. And as as you said, we shouldn't be judging people. They have the right to think and do and act and and and, and live their life the way that they want. The only issue is that when they are forcing others to do their bit. Everybody has has to have the same right to do what what they want to do, as long as they're responsible with each other. Absolutely, you know, like don't start none, there won't be none, right? It's, yeah. It's, 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 that's 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 the whole of uh, that. That's that's what you, you do the right thing, and you, you don't usually have problems. But here here in the United States, uh, we have the largest prison population in the world. <laughs> you know, more than some of these totalitarian regimes. You know. Like it's 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 absolutely crazy. We have how many people we have in prison for nonviolence. You know, never hurt anybody. Yeah. You know, driving across state lines with some pot. Yeah. That, you know, they're, they're, they're introducing some people who sold some pot. They're in jail for thirty years. Yeah. You know. Like yeah. It's just absolutely. Yeah, there are certain things that are quite questionable, to be honest, and. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, here in California, you can go into what looks like the Apple Store and and, and buy pot. But you know, you drive across the border to Arizona, and yeah, there's, completely there's different no, game. It's a different game. There's people in prison. And wow. It's, it's it doesn't make any sense. That's incredible, actually, because uh, when 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 did that happen? Because I, I don't remember exactly when 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 pot became legal in in California. Um, med medicinally, I think it was about twelve years ago. Yeah. It was about three years ago. Um, when it I became recreational. Time, so. Now it's yeah, recreational, it right? Recreational. Yeah, I, I wasn't living here at the time. Mm. But uh, 
it. So I don't remember exactly when it happened, but I remember when I moved here a couple of years ago. Yeah. Just my first time going into one of the stores. Just like, how, why hasn't this always been this way? Yeah. It, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And, well, without trying to go deep into the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. because we're gonna we're, we're, we we might end up uh, having a really really interesting discussion, which is great, but it's not the main topic of this podcast. We might have one and another podcast all about conspiracies and all about crazy government stuff any other day of the week. But this is the Sound of Kim podcast, and here we talk about music and our passion. We're talking about music, yeah. But I mean, uh, honestly, we're talking about rock and roll, and what's more in- integral to rock and roll? Than, you know, the rebellion. Everything. That's drugs, rock and roll. Exactly. That's, that's, that's spirit, girls, and boys. Yeah, that's what we do for a living. That, that's that's who we are. Yeah, but you know, um, it's it's uh, as, as we were discussing before going live. Uh, I, it's it's been quite a fa- it's been it's I would say that it has been quite a nice experience uh, being able to meet so many people from around the world through this podcast and to see. And this is something that has been quite uh, quite quite amazing for me to see that the rock and roll spirit is still alive, good and alive. Because even though we are living in this world where music is going to the to, to the drain every single second, uh, there are so many talented artists as yourself who who are struggling to find a, to find a place in this uh, in this new in this new uh, music industry. And it's also kind of discouraging to see that many kids are growing up just uh, uh, well with their highest ambition uh, be- being a YouTuber. Or just another beat producer, which is nothing wrong. I don't have anything wrong to say about beat beat producers or hip hop producers. The thing is that they they are oversaturated in the market, and when you get one thing being uh, the norm, you completely destroy the concept of diversity. And without diversity, good ideas won't flourish. And that's a, that's that's a huge problem. But the thing is that it's quite awesome to see that the rock and roll community is still alive around the world. And everybody is still keeping the same spirit. That's the reason why rock and roll is the king of music. And I and change my mind. I don't care if you don't if you don't believe that. Go ahead, we can debate it. But uh, <laughs> but rock and roll the, the rock and roll is awesome because it's pushing this uh, this rebellious attitude and this uh, inquiry to everything in life. That's the core. Absolutely, rock and roll has been pushing, expanding minds, and pushing boundaries, and experimenting since forever i keep on hearing people say uh you know that rock is a dying genre and and then you know i go and see a band like royal blood or uh like muse or and i'm like how can you say that how can you even possibly say that rock and roll is dying metallica is i think it's the biggest act in the world at this at this moment we're absolutely we're dealing with 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 bands are able to to to, to bring more than uh, a few thousands of people per concert every single night, and you're coming to tell me that rock and roll is a dying genre? Like, what? Yeah. When's it, the last time you went to a Radiohead concert? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How about Tool? <laughs> you, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, you, Tool has a. Uh, when was the last time that they released an album? It was like in 2007 or six, right? Uh, when they released no, they 10, released 10,000. Last year, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's a great album. But my point is that it took them like almost. 16 years, years, yeah, 13 years yeah. to release a new album, and they still have a huge following, and they are still, well, they used to sold out their concerts. Nowadays, nobody's playing anymore, but right. they, once again, are you telling me that Rock and Roll is dying when you have such an example, for God's sake? No, did, remember last year when uh, when uh, they finally decided to release their entire discography on streaming oh, platforms man. on Spotify? It was number one for went, weeks. It multiple platinum overnight. It was the first time that yep. anyone had done that. In ages, exactly like on, on albums that were recorded in 1990. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, do you want any more proof that rock and roll is still alive and it's still the king of music? <laughs> there you have it. Changed my mind once again. Yeah. So yeah, and, and but the, the the best part of it is that the rock and roll community is not only alive and well, but also the spirit is still as fiery and full of energy as ever. And I think oh. that this 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 situation is bringing more people into the rock and roll side. Because one of the many things that rock and roll have have to offer is, is the as you said, opening your mind to new to new realities. It's always promoting the idea of you thinking for yourself. Don't buy anything from anyone. Don't drink from their Kool Aid. You have the right to make your own Kool Aid. And and it, and this situation is pushing people to realize and to open their eyes that 
there are many things going on in the world, not only in the musical world. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, 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 you know, not drinking the Kool-Aid, not ex that doesn't mean just blindly being contrary to exactly. every story. Yeah. Either. You know, you, you, just, you just don't say, well, everyone thinks that, so no. You, and, you know, it also doesn't mean that you do your re doing your research it doesn't mean searching for what you believe. You yeah. know, like, is this this way? And then reading the first thing on Google, that's not research. No, <laughs> that's not meant. You know, I, I, I read a ton. I, I read a lot of books. I, uh, I am constantly trying to, you know, figure out what's actually going on. It's, yeah. There's, fuck if I, you, you can't, uh, you can't get through life. I mean, you can, absolutely. I have plenty of, I know plenty of people who spend most, most evenings with a bottle of wine and, you know, reality television, right? Yeah. And that's, and they're they're fine with that and they're happy with that. Good for them. That's yeah, totally. Not, it's it's wrong decision. That's not the rock and roll spirit. <laughs> no, it is not. It is not. It is not. But it's their way of life, and nobody's here to judge them. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's I'm not rock not and roll. Anybody liking what they like and, and and just wanting to have a have a simple life, I, I respect the hell totally. out of that. I wish I could do it. <laughs> totally, man. I understand what you mean. I totally agree with that one. I wish I didn't have this burning desire to to squeeze every last drop out of that dry rock. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, it's yeah. hard work. Yeah, it, it is hard and arduous, and but and somebody has to do it. Sometimes. But somebody has to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh man, that, that's... otherwise, otherwise we just end up like the people at the end of Wally. -E, yeah, know? yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. People without the will to do anything else outside of self-indulgence, and these—that's yeah. not the future that I want, and neither no. do you, and neither you. Watching this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. That's yeah. Enough. Yeah. Exactly. This is your time to wake up, and this is the whole comfort. Actually, actually, that's the reason why why I also decided to push this idea of the podcast because it's not only about engaging a conversation with different institutions from all over the world, but also it's about having these um, these conversation with you, girls and boys, you, the people uh, from all over the world, uh, and to, it's another it's another platform for you to express yourself through this conversation. Because I, I am a true believer of music being the most powerful way of communication in the world. Because I, oh, I, 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 I think you would agree with this one. But I think that music is the way, is the, is the, is the, is the way that we as human beings can communicate with each other without even saying a word. Because my grandpa, yeah. my grandpa used to say, and I, and, I, and I always say this to basically every single one of the people that I met in my life. My, my grandpa used to say uh, that music was the most effective way of communication because... Even though both of you might might speak in different languages, you can understand exactly what one or both of them are saying at the same time, thanks to the power of music. Because music can communicate with you in a higher level. It's not only about the words that's been said or being sung in this particular setting, but since music is full of more uh, communication cues in the in the form of harmony, melody, it reaches deeper into your soul, so you can make this connection with people emotionally speaking which is way bigger than than what we can say in a rational way oh yeah i i i have no idea how to communicate my emotions using conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can i can understand that uh, but music um, is, is the way to do it but yeah in, in a song I, I i can i can make you feel what i'm feeling you know in a, in three seconds uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, I discovered the, the other night, you know, when I, when I was, uh, when I was having some fun here, I, I, I discovered this new mantra. Yeah. Um, every moment is an opportunity to not eat ketchup. Uh, and it's, uh, so a couple years ago, some friends and I, we went, we went to go to a, a desert festival and there, there's a lot of what I call feral hits there, mm -hmm. right? You know? Guys, just come up to you and they're like, "Hey, bro, can I borrow your everything?" Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking. Yeah, about. totally, totally. Anyway, one of them had this bumper sticker on on the back of their, their car that said, "Every moment is an opportunity for love and transformation." And I'm like, "Do you really believe that, or is that just something you say?" Yeah. Right. But then, I, then I realized, I had this realization the other night that every moment is an opportunity to not do something you hate, which for me is eating ketchup. Ketchup yeah, is, is I got you. Not a garbage condiment. Yeah, yeah. So you know, if, if, once I realized that, that that every moment I have is a chance to grab something, 
grab something new, try something different, try something that isn't something that you dread doing, mm. you know, because you only have so many minutes, 10,000 hours of practice to, <laughs> to become a master of something that you love, right? Yeah. Uh, you only have a limited time to finish that, right? <laughs> so, and you don't know how long that is. Yeah. So don't waste time eating ketchup or yeah. whatever it is that is your ketchup, right? Exactly. Or, yeah, and actually that reminds me of something that uh, I, I read once. Um, I I remember uh, I was reading the, the teachings of uh, of many of the masters of Buddhism, and it was Bodhidharma, uh, who is also one of the biggest names in, in Kung Fu. He said that Buddhas don't practice nonsense. <laughs> no. Makes total sense. Because if yeah. you think about it, how many hours many people in the world spend just uh, doing exactly what they hate? And I'm not talking about necessarily a, a physical activity such as your job or wherever. I'm talking about a, a, a mental, a mental state, of, a, 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 a state of mind. One that you hate. You are always punishing yourself with something that you don't like. Uh, doing or repeating exactly the same sh bullshit that you hate in your head every single day. And that's what, what Bodhidharma meant. You're supposed yeah. to do only the things that makes you happy, but only the things that are responsibly making you happy. It's not about indulging in self-indulgence. It's about no, no. improving yourself in the right way. It's also you more happy than anything. Exactly, exactly. Only so, yeah, you put it right. Only success is gonna, is gonna, is gonna make you feel the way that you're wanting to feel. So girls exactly. and boys, the, 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 the the lesson here is push yourself to your own limits. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I mean, you, we do so many things out of obligation that don't need to ever be done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, you know, just, just because it, we feel like it's something we're supposed to do or we have to do, and we, we don't set those boundaries, we don't, we don't let people know, like, nah, I can't, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, you know, yeah. there, there's no reason that that needs to be done. Uh, but you know, there there are people who like to be controlling out there, right? There are yeah. people who decide that their their way is going to happen, and you're going to kowtow to their whims or or else. Yeah, I, I I am unapologetically myself, always, and most people appreciate that. Yeah, you know? and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the at the end of the game, uh, everybody has the right to make up their own mind, and actually, that's the whole message yeah. of this pod of this podcast in particular. If you think about it, yeah. because we have been discussing the fact that everybody has to think for themselves, so we're not anybody to tell them what to think about. And actually, that's what I say <laughs> every no, single time. Ab ab absolutely, think about whatever you want, but you know, think about it smartly. That's yeah, yeah, say. exactly. Uh, look, look to more than one source. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, don't don't just read one one news source. And assume that they're always giving you the the right uh, yeah. perspective. You know, if, if you if you live, you know, you can read uh, you know, you can go to American newspapers, Irish newspapers, uh, Al Jazeera, uh, you know, Australian newspapers. They're all yeah. going to give you a different perspective. Totally. Cultural bias. Yeah. And, uh, and look, a lot of that's just social conditioning, right? Yep. Uh, you have no choice when you're born of who you're going to be raised by, what culture or religion you're going to be raised in, what uh, how good of an education you're going to get, you know. But you do have the, the ability to decide to overcome or learn from or whatever you can from as many sources as possible. Exactly. At the end, it's your own responsibility, uh, whatever happens with your life. And it's your own responsibility yeah. if you succeed or, or, or not, because yeah. uh, it's uh, the only people who really it's gonna be is is, is really caring about your your well-being is yourself. And I, I'm not trying to sound like a, like a horrible human being, but you are the one who is responsible for whatever happens with you. Not even your mother is gonna be there for you in the last moment of your life. And yeah. there are so many things that your 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 family, your 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 parents, or even the government are going to be able to do for you because at the end if you don't you don't do anything to improve yourself you're going to stay in the same situation forever absolutely and a huge chunk of that is uh is networking creating your own opportunity exactly you go out there and meet as many people as you possibly can yeah and a lot of them might suck you know? yeah that's that's real that's you that's how it is 
you might meet some real douchebags, but you'll also meet a lot of really cool people who have similar ideas and ideologies yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, goals and ambitions as you. And if you can work together with those people, you can create opportunities that you, yeah. that you wouldn't have just stumbled into. Nobody stumbles into opportunities nope. except for you know people who were born with really rich parents. Yep. And even then... <laughs> they have they have to reach to the top. It's 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 just that yeah. they are starting from a different level, but it's the same. It's the same thing for yeah. everybody in a way. Uh, yeah, and you know, you, you got the thinking because I remember I, probably I might be wrong, but I remember that it was Carl Jung who said that you are not you are the reflection of the people that surround you. Because uh, if you are surrounded by people who are uh, uh, successful, well, who have a who happen to have a successful mindset, you are also gonna share the same mindset because you're you're gonna be impregnated by their by their ideas but if you decide to to, to to be surrounded by people who are just a bunch of uh, all-time losers that's what you're going to end up becoming because you are not yeah, you're bringing you're putting garbage information into your head you should be absolutely. written in nursery yep if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room totally man you <laughs> said it right that's that's a, that's a fact and yeah. and that's something that has to be said man, because you're right you're right if there is, there's, there is something really wrong if you're the only one who is intelligent enough to realize that you are the only one intelligent enough. Absolutely, and that's that's the beautiful thing about my, my friend group is that you know we're we're all we all have our own different skills and intelligences, and they all really you know go mesh together. And, you know, uh, you know, you got your one friend who's really good at you know building shit. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, reverse engineering anything. They can help you out with ideas on you know how to, how to fix dumb things. You know, you've got your other buddy who's really good at, uh, you know, making money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, which is completely different to scale. Yeah, exactly. And, and they, they can show you, you know, uh, how to, how to you know, improve your financial situation. And then let's say you're, you're really good at, uh, you know, networking and yep. people, cultivating relationships, yep. right? And then you can help your, your friends who are maybe a little bit more shy and insecure, uh, cultivate relationships and everyone yep. can share their knowledge as long as you have something to bring to the table but you know if you surround it with yourself with people who are just content you know eating bonbons yeah nothing is going to change not, nothing's yeah you're not ever going to grow or experience everything that life has to offer and that's that's okay if that's what you want yeah you know, that's if that's who you are and you don't feel a need to ever uh do anything but play call of duty and that's just you're fine with that. But yeah. that's, I'm not judging. That. No, no, but don't that's come back. Fine. Don't come back complaining. <laughs> that's that's the only issue. Yeah. That's the only yeah, point. That, exactly. Yeah, it's it's all it's all it's all your own responsibility. It's your fault. Yeah. So awesome. Exactly. Uh, we're once again. I am surprised that we are. <laughs> we've been talking for so long. It's not that I want you to to shut you down, but uh, it's it, we're, we're we're asking too much for people to be holding their phone like this for for more than for almost an hour, and. <laughs> We are. I. I. I totally. I totally. Uh, I am glad that that many people have stayed with us for for most of the podcast. But I also. I am conscious of this Happy situation. Everybody. Yeah. So. So once again, um, where where can we find you, man? What's up? Where can we find you online and and? Oh, so yeah. Um, once again, uh, uh, Instagram golden underscore plates. Yep. Here uh, is on the on, on the screen. Spotify. Um, any uh, so if you go to my book profile on my Instagram, uh, Golden Place, there's a, there's a link tree uh, that'll take you to all my stuff. You know, I've got some cool merch. If you if you really want to get a T-shirt with my with my ugly face on it, uh, that's that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, and then uh, yeah, I, I'm planning on uh, on writing a little bit more about those five commandments we talked about earlier. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just, I, I really think that the, uh, the golden place lifestyle is something that, you know, it's, it's more than just music. I think it's something that a uh, community can be created, uh, where people actually, you know, are able to share ideas and, and concern for each other, be compassionate. Because, you know, there's a lot of people who just don't fit in and don't have anywhere, anywhere to turn for uh, guidance. You know, we're talking about, I don't remember if this is before we went live or not, we were talking about all, all the people who had some mental health yeah. uh, problems that nobody's looking out for right now. Yeah. And I, 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 I want to be someone who looked out for those people. You know? Yeah, it's, at it's, least at least giving, the, giving them the sense that they are not alone. At least there's somebody who is yeah. still, still concerned about their well-being. 
absolutely because I, I sure as hell am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, man. So uh, thank you, Banke, for for joining. And he actually he stayed the whole podcast, so which is remarkable. He 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 should have a gigantic arm. Uh, he managed to stay with us the, the whole time, well, almost an hour, which is great, and, and I am more than thankful for that. Thank you very much. And girls and boys, um, this was the Sound Alchemy Podcast, and uh, stay tuned because uh, there is more coming, and you will see. There is. I would like to. I would love to have you back uh, once you have finally written down the, the the commandments. That would be awesome if you can come up and explain to us every single one of them in a much more elaborate way. Because I think that would be a great, a great, a great discussion. So, yeah, awesome. So, as every single time that I meet you girls and boys, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And we will see you when we see you.